Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at EVGO's latest quarter four earnings report. Um, this is going to be the slide presentation that we're looking at here today. They went through this on their earnings call as well. I would encourage you to check that out if you're looking to invest in EVGO or if you are a shareholder currently. But we're going to be going through the slide presentation specifically here in today's video. Um, and we're going to be starting off here on the first slide with a lot of general information about EVGO at this point in time. EVGO has nine OEM partnerships at the moment. Here's just a few of them. We've got General Motors, Toyota, Subaru, Nissan, and Tesla. There's 140 million Americans living within 10 miles of an EVGO charger, 553,000 customer accounts. Um, they're operating in 30 plus states with 60 plus major metropolitan areas. Um, there's 69% year over year network throughput growth over 2021. Their network has been 100% powered by renewable energy since 2019, and that's done through the purchase of renewable energy certificates. So it's not directly powered by renewable energy, but it's kind of indirectly done through the purchase of these certificates. Um, they've got 900 plus locations, so you can see a lot of those here on this map. Um, these are not chargers, okay? These this number right here, the 2,800 plus, those are the number of chargers that they actually have. And then these are the actual number of different locations. So each one of these locations, you know, one of them could have one charger and another one could have five chargers, for example. Then down here, then we've got the amount of actual charging stalls, which they've got 2,800 plus that are, you know, in operation or under construction. And those are all DC fast chargers, it looks like. They've got about 4,000 charging stalls in the active engineering and construction phase. Um, so those are not yet actually under construction like some of these ones are, but these ones are kind of in the planning process, essentially. And there was over 3 million registered PlugShare accounts. They include this because they own PlugShare. I know a lot of people don't know that, but EVGO acquired PlugShare back in 2021. Um, so that's why that's included there. Moving on to the next slide here, we've got key business highlights. So we've got some of the same numbers from up above, um, such as the 2,800 stalls in operation or under construction. Um, they say that those increased 47% year over year with 670 new stalls added to the EVGO network in 2022. Their active engineering and construction stall development pipeline grew 29% year over year. Then down here, we've got the same number from up here, that 670 new stalls added to the network in 2022. They say that that increased 131% year over year. They had 44.6 gigawatt hours of network throughput, which is up 69% over 2021. There was 146% revenue increase versus 2021. 3 million plus registered plug share accounts. Um, that increased 50% year over year. So all around some pretty good growth for EVGO in 2022. Over here, there are some bar graphs. The first one here being for the stalls in operation or under construction, which grew 47%, you know, this first item here. Then there's the network throughput in gigawatt hours. So this is the electricity they're delivering to drivers, which grew 69%. You can see that visualized here as well. Moving on to the next slide, there is, you know, multiple pathways to capitalize on rapid growth in electrification of transportation. So EVGO breaks this down into four distinct pathways here. Um, one is public charging networks. One of them is rideshare fleet. The other is dedicated fleet. And then the other is technology enabled services. Here on the next slide is sort of a breakdown of EVGO's accomplishments and milestones during 2022, broken down by public fleet technology operations and people categories. So under the public category, they added 670 stalls in 2022. They launched the EVGO Renew program to enhance driver experience by upgrading, replacing, or retiring older 50 kilowatt chargers. They deepened they're deepening and expanding partnerships with blue chip OEMs such as Toyota, Subaru, and Cadillac. New site host agreements at Lowe's and others augment their existing portfolio, and they're improving driver experience with subscription plans, rewards, and dynamic pricing strategies. Then under the fleet category, they say they're expanding partnerships with Uber and Lyft for rideshare drivers, including in-app technical and marketing collaboration. 
They signed new behind-the-fence deals with MHX and an unnamed national food and beverage company, and they're developing new DC fast-charging hubs for existing AV partners. Under the technology category, they've launched AutoCharge Plus, which is improving customer satisfaction, increasing percentage of charging session initiations. Um, this is essentially their automatic um, kind of seamless experience for EV drivers, um, where if you register for Auto Charge Plus, you can simply plug in your vehicle and it'll automatically start charging. So it's a lot less complicated and a more streamlined experience for the driver. There's EVgo Inside delivering full EVgo charging experience via OEM and partner apps, GM, Toyota, Amazon, Alexa, and more to come. They've enhanced their EVgo mobile app, and apparently after they did this, they more than doubled the amount of monthly average mobile app initiated charging sessions. Since its inception, the EVgo Innovation Lab has tested 45 EVs across 30 unique brands. And then there's the PlugShare 3 million plus registered users. They also launched Pay with PlugShare and scaled direct and indirect advertising. Then under the operations category, they signed a new expanded supply agreement with Delta Electronics for their 350 kilowatt chargers. They executed Extend Infrastructure Partnership with Pilot, Flying J, and GM for 500 sites and commenced site development and construction. They collaborated with a data science team to launch their network plan and they expanded their qualified contractor base for charger deployments. Then under the people category, they added new senior talent including leaders in retail revenue, software, accounting, and controls, PMO and supply chain, customer experience, and business development, and they added roles in software development, engineering, and construction to support the build out of EVgo's network. There's a brief slide here on EVgo's Renew program, which is EVgo's commitment to maximize uptime and deliver world-class driver experiences across new and legacy infrastructure. Essentially, the way they're doing this is by upgrading their older stalls or just completely retiring them. You can see in 2022, they've upgraded more than 100 stalls and they retired approximately 160 stalls. And I do believe they do have bigger plans for um, retiring stalls and upgrading stalls in 2023. Then we've got a few slides on EVgo's key financial highlights from the fourth quarter. Um, they start off here with revenues growing 283% year over year, driven by increases in extend and retail charging revenues. Retail charging revenues increased 65% on a year over year basis. basis and extend revenues increased $16.6 million as pre-engineering and equipment delivery started for certain pilot Flying J sites. Adjusted gross margin declined from 28.2% to 18.3%, primarily due to a decrease in the percentage of contribution of regulatory credit sales to revenue mix and a reduction in LCFS prices. Adjusted EBITDA reflects continued investments in growth, Net proceeds of $10.4 million from issuance of 1.6 million Class A shares in an at-the-market offering, and they ended quarter four with $246.5 million of cash, cash equivalents, and restricted cash. They say the kilowatt hours dispensed from their chargers are increasing faster than their stall growth, essentially meaning their stations are getting more utilized per station, essentially, which is always a good thing. They say more than 10 metro markets are exhibiting double-digit utilization. The charge rate increased 17% year-over-year, and the charge rate for the 350 kilowatt chargers was about 53 kilowatts. Total throughput increased 69% year-over-year, with um, monthly retail throughput nearly doubling over the course of the year, and customer accounts of 553,000%, which grew 63% year-over-year. Monthly fleet throughput nearly doubled over the course of the year, here they lay down their pricing strategy for retail drivers. So they say they've launched kilowatt hour pricing along with time of use pricing. There's subscription plans including EVgo Plus Max, EVgo Plus, or EVgo Basic. And then there's the essentially what you do if you don't have the subscription where you pay as you go if you're only occasionally using fast charging with EVgo. They say they're off to a strong start in 2023 with quarter one, quarter two date daily average throughput being about 20% higher than it was in quarter four, 2022, which is pretty good to see. 
Over here, they've got a couple more bar graphs. This one showing their throughput in gigawatt hours growing 69% year over year. And then this one on the bottom showing their operational stalls growing 29% year over year. Next up, we've got some guidance for 2023. They say they're expecting their revenue to come in between 105 and 150 million dollars. The adjusted EBITDA, they're expecting to be between 78 and 60 million dollar loss. And then for total stalls in operation or under construction as of the year end 2023, they're expecting between 3,400 and 4,000 stalls. Next up, we've got a slide breaking down the revenue by their individual business categories, essentially. All of these numbers are in thousands. So, for example, this is right here. This is $5,828,000. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at these. Um, the thing that really stands out to me on this slide here is just how large their extend revenue is compared to something like their charging revenue for retail. Um, you know, this is what they're most well known for, I think, among most investors, among most EV drivers is their standard, you know, retail chargers that you can charge at. Um, but it's really interesting to see just how large their extend program has become for their overall business, bringing in $16.7 million here in the fourth quarter. Next up, we have EVGO's balance sheet. Again, all of these numbers are in thousands. So be sure to keep that in mind when looking through all of this. Um, but you can see that their cash and cash equivalents are significantly lower than where they were at the end of 2021. Um, so that's a common theme for a lot of these EV charging companies, especially these more capital intensive ones that are owning the chargers themselves. Um, there's just a lot of capital expenditures involved there alongside all of the salaries and research and development expenses, things like that. So it's really no surprise to see this massive cash burn happening here for EVGO. Of course, right here, you can see the direct result of all of those capital expenditures with their property, equipment, and software line growing from $133 million at the end of 2021 up to $308 million here at the end of 2022. EVGO's current liabilities are sitting at $87.3 million right now, and then their total liabilities overall, those are sitting at $212.6 million. If you subtract those total liabilities from their total assets, you do find a book value of $517 million, which is pretty good um, for an EV charging company. But of course, this is kind of a different story between companies that are owning their chargers, like what EVGO does, and companies that are simply selling their hardware. Um, so that's something to keep, keep in mind here. Obviously, there are $308 million right there just coming from the chargers that EVGO owns. So if this was a company that was just manufacturing the equipment, somebody like ChargePoint or Tritium, for example, um, then, you know, they wouldn't really have quite as much property and equipment sitting there on their balance sheet. Next up, we've got EVGO's income statement. Um, a lot of these things are things that we kind of covered in the slides above, such as their revenue growth of 282% year over year for the fourth quarter. Now, of course, they also mentioned how their margins have been declining. You can see that demonstrated right here with their cost of revenue increasing 336%. So even more than the revenue that's coming in. So of course, that's going to be taking a hit to their margins. Depreciation came in at $6 million and that brought their cost of sales up to $28.4 million. So you'll notice that's a bit higher than their revenue. So they ended up having a gross loss of $1.1 million. But you can see here that EVGO's gross loss for quarter four 2021 was even more coming in at $1.8 million. So even though this is still a loss, this is an improvement year over year. Their general and administrative expenses came in at $36.8 million, which was substantially higher than quarter four 2021, where they were $24.9 million. So that's a growth of 48% there for those general and administrative expenses. All of these factors led to an operating loss of $42.5 million, which you can see is quite a lot more than the $30.2 million of operating loss they had at quarter four 2021. Next up, we've got EVGO's cash flow statement. Here you can see they've used $58.8 million in their operating activities. Uh, then there's the investing activities section where you can see they've used $199.7 million there. Now, a lot of these in the investment section do carry over to the balance sheet. 
Um, so you can see those purchases of property, equipment, and software right here. Um, you can see purchases of investments there at $37.3 million. And then here are some proceeds from the sale of investments that they've made in the past, which gave them $37.2 million. And then there's the financing activities section. You can see they've raised $10.6 million from their issuance of common stock under the at the market offering. And then there's the capital build funding, which provided them $10.1 million. Um, and then all of their financing put together gave them um, $19.8 million provided from their financing activities. I've got a lot of other videos on EV charging companies. A number of them are about EVgo specifically. So be sure to check some of those videos out and I hope to see all of you in the next video.